From bulls intelligent and handy enough to rid themselves of parasitic infection, to entire cattle bred for the sole purpose of supplying a massive meat market, the number of cattle breeds is varied and richly aligned with human history. These are the 15 most unique bulls in the world. No bull. Don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe to The Supreme, and click the notification bell for more lit content. Let's get rolling. Number 15. Texas Longhorn The Texas Longhorn is as American-raised as they come. After an extended period, cattle have become reliant on humans, but not the Longhorn. The Longhorn's handiness and strength make it one of the most iconic symbols of cattle anywhere. Their adaptability made them what they are today. If man had intruded, as with all other cattle, the Longhorn would not be the iconic beast that it is today. The Longhorn has many unique characteristics that help it stand out among its cattle cousins. Each and every one's coloring is like a thumbprint, their colors ranging in variety more than any other cattle breeds. Among its many traits, we can't forget its most unique feature of all, the very one that earned it its nickname, the Longhorn. During most of its youth, its horns span on average four feet. As it moves from youth into adolescence, its horns can grow to a whopping nine feet long. It also has a natural resistance to the infamous cattle killer, the screw worm. If the parasite somehow makes it past the Longhorn's natural resistances, the Longhorn knows just how high it needs to stand in water to drown and suffocate the infections. It's no wonder that this has become the symbol of the Old West. The best part about this job is coming across some of the strangest and most mysterious corners on the internet. And then I get to share those things with you. For the latest example, this massive bull resembles a common breed, but its coloring sets it apart. Is this the work of some unique breeding going on? Or the work of another internet hoax? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments, and don't forget to include the tag, hashtag open discussion, to make sure you're heard. Number 14. Angus Bull you may have heard about the premium beef at your local supermarket or steakhouse, but has your interest ever peaked enough to understand just what this premium meat is? If it's not the cow or beef, what is it? Well, consider your curiosity satiated. These massive hornless cattle are known for their quantity and quality of meat it produces. As sad as that may sound, it's the truth. These bulls are hardy as one would have to be in order to live out in the harsh Scottish winters. But before you head to the market and pay that premium price for this beef, you might want to have a listen to this. Its superior quality may only be superior in its marketing techniques. The meat was heavily marketed for the fast food industry before adoption as premium beef. To elaborate, a certified Angus at your local restaurant or supermarket was indeed a marketing trick, allowing them to slap a premium price tag on anything certified. For example, the certification process has little to do with the meat quality and more to do with the animal specifics in which it is cut. There is no evidence proven to have more superiority over traditional beef, save for its appeal as a marketed premium beef. Number 13. Bucking Bull As its name implies, this bull is a wild one. The famed animal has made the rodeo what it is today. This hybrid was bred with bucking and entertainment in mind. From the get-go, the bull is raised for the sole purpose of knocking off riders. With sturdy legs and encouraged temperament of rage and fierceness, this entertainment animal could just as quickly kill its rider as it could buck him off. Perhaps that's the part of the allure of the rodeo, creatures with massively overpowering strength when compared with that of a human. The dance with death makes the rodeo a spectacle that has to be observed to understand. In the whipping sands of times, as with all things, the rodeo turned into a niche sport. Today, however, the rodeo is more dangerous than ever before, solidifying its entertainment value. The animals today are stronger, feistier, and more dangerous than in the past. In fact, just from the 90s to 2014, the successful rate of riding a bucking bull was decreased from 75% to 35%, a testament to the increasing strength, tenacity, and danger of the rodeo scene today. Number 12. Ancoli Watusi The Ancoli Watusi cow is a beautiful and majestic creature. It's one of the only cows with horns in the bovine cattle family. 
Just take a look at those massive horns. One can't help but stare in awe at their enormous size. The animal's strength allows it to stand tall even with the added weight. The display exemplifies the Ancoli temperament, proud and strong. Ranging in color from browns and tans to solid blacks, they're often crossbred with many well-known breeds, such as the previously mentioned Longhorn, to help develop their hardiness. This has led to the pollution of their pure and Coli Watusi bloodline that originates from Africa. The only real premium cut of Ancoli must be from one of those premium farms. Otherwise, it's just a better cut mixed Ancoli. Because of its near extinction, the Ancoli Watusi was left in the capable hands of independent focused farms, cultivating a habitable environment for the near extinct creature. With the extraordinary efforts from farmers and businesses alike, an agreement to save the beast was formed. Big business would keep out of the Watusi meat business, and in the capable hands of the independent farmer, with their combined efforts, they curbed the extinction and now set them on a path of recovery. An incredible undertaking and accomplishment at the hands of a passionate and caring community. Number 11. Belgian Blue I had no idea there were so many different types of bull out there. I mean, the variety and industry are so varied that there are apps to help identify and register any new addition to your herd. Originating, as its namesake suggests, from Belgium, Blue here is revered for its well-muscled build and its docile temperament. I mean, these beasts are muscled, the meathead of the bovine family. Getting so buff, it's developed what's called double muscling which is essentially muscle forming on top of other muscle. Belgium can become too muscled that it almost appears as fat, but I assure you, it's muscle. On average, a cattle breed of a similar size weighs 900 kilograms, but Big Blue would weigh 1,250 kilograms at the same age and size, but because of the heavier weight of muscle over fat, these monsters weigh in at a near 300 kilogram more than any other comparable size. But bigger size doesn't always mean a bigger reward for any would-be blue farmers, with breeding and birth, for example. If the two animals are pure Belgium blood descent, the Calvink has a 90% chance of C-section intrusion to save all the animals involved, due to the massive size and muscle a newborn calf is born with. As you can imagine, any would-be breeders have their work cut out for them when it comes to birthing, which has led to a dilution of the breed to accommodate easier and safer breeding conditions. Number 10. Beefalo As much as I'd hoped this was a joke name, it's not. It's like someone said, what the heck do we call this one? Giving it 10 seconds of thought, then tossing out all care to land on Beefalo. I thought it was a cartoonish name. Nevertheless, the Beefalo is real and is the only American cattle to have descended from the American bison. This native creature roamed the American frontier much before the pilgrims had even decided to set sail for new land. To its name, one must understand the bovine family. There is beef bovine and milk bovine, which constitutes a different type of breeding and build of the animal itself. As you can imagine, the beefalo is one such animal that's bred for its quantity and quality of beef content. To be considered a beefalo, the beast must possess 3 eighths bison and 5 eighths bovine blood, a particular set of requirements. This has led to the beefalo breed being less common than one might first assume. Number 9. Santa Gertrudis Named after the land grant for which the cattle was first bred, the Santa Gertrudis is massive in a bull breed from the abundant and local shorthorn with the massive Brahmin bull, often displaying a full red tint in their coloring, the Santa Gertrudis can be both horned and hornless, allowing it a unique characteristic among the bull family. If you were to think of an original or traditional American beef, this bovine crossbreed would be listed under that definition. Easy to breed, handy in all forms of weather, eat purely of the grasslands of their Texas home and still grow to massive amounts for an abundant harvest. In its early breeding stages in early America, the Santa Gertrudis was bred to survive the harsh conditions that it was sure to face in the coming years. After its hardiness became a transferable trait to its young, the focus transitioned from survivability to profitability, bringing rise to the great American meat market, for better or for worse. What's known is we are strictly reevaluating our breeding processes of these magnificent creatures going on into the future, as they are a significant source of meat distribution in the United States. 
Number 8. Afrikaner The Afrikaner is the no-bull bull cattle, earning its title as the no-nonsense breed for a good reason. They are hardy, exhibit many positive traits that set it apart from other cattle, and they have longer legs, which are usually considered no bueno in the cattle world. But they do little to affect the Afrikaner. Even with its long legs, it maintains the same, if not more, depth, which means more resilience to nature, more capability of breeding, and more product to sell. Because of their odd positive traits that often counter many of the negative features, many breeds are bred with the hardy Afrikaner. Its positive features may overwrite the negative of other races. For instance, a longhorn produced with an Afrikaner could result in a calf with the positive traits of both. Needless to say, some exciting cattle and sizes have arisen with cattle breeding experimentation. This also points to a fair chance that our open discussion in this video does ring true. Uh, why does the internet have to be such a wondrous and complicated corner of all of our lives? Number 7. Beefmaster The name is fantastic, when you don't think about everything that it implies. Oddly enough, these bulls are not hailed for the amount of beef they produce. Instead, they are by their power of influence over the breeding process. To put it simply, the Beefmaster is not named in due to its yield at the butcher shop, but how it affects the maternal cow during pregnancy, allowing for a higher chance of well-stocked calves from birth. Therefore, its name comes from its effectiveness in mating and how the crossbreeding affects the meat on the calves. Because of their power over the breeding process, the Beefmaster bull is a go-to for commercial cattlemen as they allow for the use of a single bull or two that breeds with an entire herd of females. Lower maintaining costs with the highest available product from its offspring is a win-win to any cattleman's pocketbook. Number 6. Shorthorn The Shorthorn is one of the few breeds that can be found worldwide, originating from the northeastern coast of England and spreading across the continents. The Shorthorn was hailed for its ability to adapt to whatever conditions it endured, allowing it to become one of the earliest cattle to be herded by men. Their name can be a little misleading as they can have both Shorthorns or No Horns. Still, the No Horns version arrived later within the breeding process, which at first is an abnormality among the others. A red-nosed Rudolph type of story, the Shorthorn with No Horn proved to be no more or less enduring, engaging, and hardly amongst its short-lived family. The Shorthorn Community Association is one of the oldest in all cattle associations, with a rich history dating back to the 1600s. Many forms of breeding, crossbreeding, and cattle raising have been written on the backs of the pioneer breed. Number 5. Brahmin as with most animals designated Brahmin, this is one of the most giant breeds of bull in the world, often a go-to breed for creating bigger, hardier breeds of cow. Like many of the bulls on this list, the Brahmin has a fierce ability for adaptation, making it one of the healthiest breeds and go-to breeders for more high-quantity consumer beef. Ever heard of the Brangus bull? Or tasted the delectable Brangus beef? If you hadn't guessed already, the Brangus is crossbred between the Angus and Brahmin bull with the best of both worlds, a massive slaughter for its high sought after beef and longevity and hardiness of life. The Brangus cattle crossbreed is famed across the bull breeding community with the bar of success hidden within the genetics that makes the Brahmin such a hardy breeder. Number 4. Kianina. The Kianina is an Italian breed with the honored title of the largest in the world. Predominantly raised for beef, these majestic cattle are of the oldest and the most cherished in the world, thanks in part to their massive size, motherly temperament, and hardiness against disease. The all-white Kianina is famed as consistently being the largest breed of cattle. I find its most unique characteristic of all is in its horse-like definition over that of a traditional bull or bovine. With long legs, bulging muscles, and an intimidating total height, the Kianina is one of the few specimens on this list that requires an eye-on experience. A picture, a video, a description can never capture the accurate mass of these bulls. The Kianina has an unsurpassed per individual lean meat mass production compared with the rest of its bull brothers and sisters, and is a popular choice for crossbreeding with females that produce rather small calves to increase the yield. 
pure Kianina beef is hard to come by and can cost a pretty penny. This is probably one cut of beef to stay away from when hosting a party unless you got the deep pockets that come along with a lean yet gorgeously marbled cut of beef. Number 3. Highland Not the largest of all the breeds, but easily the best hairstyle. With their iconic coast known from across the globe, the Highland is highly respected cattle and easily the cutest. From their shaggy swaying back and forth as they move coats to the mask draped over its eyes giving wonder to how it can even see, the Highland stand unique amongst the cattle kingdom. Its meat is known to be of extraordinary quality, considered even a delicacy by some, succulent, lean, and of ancient descent. The beef produced by the Highland cattle is some of the best in the world and is exported globally. Though the most traditional image for the Highland is that of the shaggy coat and red color, the Highland's cattle from around the world and of a different climate have different shapes and colors. Anything ranging from the iconic red with horn to white and hornless to gray and small horn. Because of the Highland's incredible ability to adapt to any environment, they can be found from the coldest and highest mountains to the lowest and driest grasslands. I admire this breed to not only survive any climate conditions, but to thrive and be sought after. Fun fact, the Highland is the oldest registered cattle in the world. Number 2. Bulingo Another mostly unknown American breed, the Bulingo. Unique looking cattle. Precisely, one that sought to be bred naturally formed food industry standards and requirements into the breeding process. This in turn reduced post-birth required manpower and deformity rates and the increased output of the consumer-friendly products. To put it short, the Bulingo was bred for the sole purpose of mass production, with the least bit of human intervention passed on to the desired breed. It's basically the birth and forget method with the cow growing into the product regardless. This is true to a point as human interaction is still required in the form of flipping a switch on a machine or feeding a single entry point that gets dispersed across a highly congested herd. Because of its high yield capabilities, it's also much more susceptible to disease and sickness. Number 1. Nguni Shaped by natural selection for thousands of years in the African wilds, the Nguni is unique cattle. Though rising in popularity for its beef, it still has a long way to go to match its American cousins due to its difficulty of management. This difficulty in management has arisen from lack of experience, not from inferior quality. Through time and with focus on adaptability, this breed could become one of Africa's most significant exports. It has only just today begun to be looked at for its potential as a beef producer, with farmers using modern techniques thanks to access to a broader range of information via the internet. With the American meat market in a major bind due to the 2020 pandemic, this option is becoming increasingly viable, especially when the alternative to said option is usually the mass production of lower quality meat due to the demand for quantity over quality. Cattle have a long and extensive history around the world it's been a source for humankind as early as recorded history. It's safe to assume we've evolved side by side with the food sources adapting as the humans changed and spread and acquired more complex needs and wants. Whether it was hardiness, quality, quantity, or pure strength, humans bred and tailored cattle genetics for thousands of years. We've today a species so heavily entwined in human history that has become associated with human nature as eating steak when in fact human necessity and not inherent with the human diet. Today its human conditioning leads to the massive imbalance between need and want in the meat market. If you like this video, don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe so you never miss another awesome video again.